The PCS we have in front of you is... Uh, oh, wait a minute. We don't have a PCS in front of us. We think it needs a motion to have a PCS in front of us. Mm -hmm. And we have a motion for Representative Gill. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Uh, we have a PCS in front of us for House Bill 117, Representative uh, Warren to recognize the person. <laughs> All right, for those of you who were here last session, this might look a little familiar to you. This is a variation of the bill that was um, filed last year by Senator Barefoot requiring criminal background checks for all uh, teachers for, for uh, uh, other personnel. We uh, changed the bill a little bit uh, where it's uh, a little more streamlined. The provision of the first part of the bill was uh, pertaining to background checks as part of the licensure process, and we removed that from the bill. But the, the bill itself, the Senator Barefoot's bill, was in response to North Carolina getting graded as an F by a USA Today report on school background checks, and primarily due to a lack of consistency in the report of the background check process. This bill will institute statewide uniformity in the standards by using a one source for the criminal background checks. Essentially, it does basically just four things. Uh, part one and part two would mandate that local boards of education, charter schools and regional schools, require applicants for school personnel positions prior to unconditional employment to be checked for criminal history by using the Department of Public Safety to check the state and national repositories criminal history boards. Now, the LEAs would also be permitted to conduct periodic criminal history checks of employees using either the DPS or the Consumer Reporting Agency, which is uh, defined in your bill for your PCS, to search local, state, and federal criminal repositories. Again, the boards would be required, LEAs would be required to indicate upon request by another public school or charter uh, if an employee's resignation or dismissal was related to criminal history. Part three of the bill would authorize a superintendent to provide written notice of charges against a teacher who uh, uh, has been suspended or incarcerated and in custody without pay, rather than having to meet with the teacher in person. And part four, excuse me, part uh, four of the bill would require local boards of education to report to the state board of education when a teacher's resignation was related to criminal uh, history regardless of whether the missile proceedings had uh, begun or the teacher had resigned without permission. The same requirement also applied to charter regional schools. Uh, essentially, that's it in a nutshell. I appreciate your support. Thank you, Representative uh, Warren. We have an amendment that's not quite read. About to print. So before we go into to debate on the bill, uh, let's wait for the amendment. Let me ask you a question, uh, Representative Bradford. Does the amendment change the substance of the bill, in your opinion? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, all it would do, this amendment, what it will do is it will allow the local folks to be able to use a commercial screening background check, just like they do today. All right. The, that, I just wanted to, while we're preparing the amendment, we can go ahead and take questions then, rather than, because it doesn't substantially change the bill, so we can proceed with debate and get this project moving along. Representative Richardson, you want to be recognized. Thank you. I have a question, Mr. Chairman, for the bill sponsor. Um, Hold on just a second. I'm fair and fair and so on. I was wondering, uh, and maybe this is part of implementation, but the list of, of items that you have down that could be found in the criminal background check, does one or any of those automatically will be a person for getting a license or having their license revoked or will this be done through due process and then the decision will be made after that? That's a no and a yes to both your questions. And thank you for the question. No, they don't, th those charges don't automatically preclude someone from getting their license. That would be up for the board. Because you, when you look down the list of those uh, offenses, there's some pretty grievous offenses that start out. But as you get down to the lower part of it, you're talking about uh, drivers, uh, driving offenses, and things of that nature. So that would still be, uh, you know, the purview, purview of the uh, state board. Any additional questions, Representative Jones? 
Uh, Mr. Chair, are we on the amendment? Would it be appropriate for me to pose a question to the amendment sponsor at this time? Well, we're not on the amendment yet. Any further questions on the bill? Representative Meyer. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can I ask a question of staff? I'm curious about uh, in Section 2 of the bill where um, we're adding language that lists a whole set of criminal statutes to be considered. Does adding this language to our statutes create any binding action on school boards that if they find something that is one of these, does that mean that they have to deny that person's license or is this simply writing statutory language? Can you tell us kind of what you feel about the whether this is mandatory or not? Carol McGraw. Um, Representative Meyer, uh, the, the language that's been added, if you look, uh, it's, if, if you could turn over actually to page four of the bill, you'll see the language, and this is language that's in current law for local boards, it's being added for charter schools for consistency, and it's true for regionals as well. Starting on line 17, the requirement for each board is for it to review the criminal history it receives and then determine based on that review whether the individual poses a threat to physical safety of students or personnel. If the person has demonstrated that he or she does not have the integrity or honesty to fulfill his or her duties and then shall use that information when making employment decisions and decisions with regard to independent contractors. So there is no requirement that just because someone happens to have one of those past felonies in their past that they cannot be hired, but it has to be uh, a decision made by the board as to how to use the information. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank Great. you. Why don't we move to get the, is the amendment ready? Has it been passed out? No. I don't hear yes or no. Okay, so we're not yet ready with the amendment. We'll continue with questions. Representative Point. Uh, is this bill going to be a mandate uh, that's funded to the local school system? Many school systems do not have a lot of uh, transiency, but many school systems in our state now have a lot of transiency of employees, teachers and other staff. Uh, you know, two levels of, of the approval background checks, federal and state. Um, so, if we are talking about having to have both of those done, that could be an exorbitant, uh, unfunded mandate unless this bill is already funded. Well, uh, Go ahead. Thank you. When the bill was uh, originally filed, we had a fiscal note to it, and that included background checks as part of the licensure process. And at that time, uh, because we had some, like, I think it was like 43,000 or so um, of the previous year that, 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 that the note was based on, there was a determination that DPI would need a one-time allotment of about $250,000 to reprogram and set up, plus two positions. That provision of the bill is completely gone, though. So the responsibility falling back on the local LEA disperses any costs over, you know, throughout the state there on the individual uh, how the gauge, but the estimated cost on the background check right now is about $35. Representative Richardson? Representative White asked my question, thank you. Uh, Chairman Johnson? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just didn't realize the line, I mean, this was that short. This, uh, Linda Johnson. That, I think that's correct. Um, this, a uh, question is for drug to this um, section uh, part three, um, line 29. You and I had a discussion about this. That That is uh, that a superintendent um, could, could not uh, suspend a teacher and they had to continue paying them because they were incarcerated and they had to meet in person to be able to suspend them. So therefore, we had to pay till their court case came up in some instances. Does this correct that problem? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, Representative Johnson, this provides, instead of having to meet in person if a teacher were being incarcerated or held in custody awaiting trial, that the uh, principal can provide a written notice and a, a, 
it provides an opportunity for the teacher to respond in writing, but they can then suspend them and pay without meeting that requirement of an in-person meeting. Okay. Thank you. Uh, hold on a second. Where are we with the amendment? It's still coming. Uh, Representative Graham, and then back to Representative White. Are, are we on the amendment or the bill? We're on the bill. Okay, question. The amendment has not yet been handed out, so we're not going to take that up until. Go ahead. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. My question is uh, is related to the uh, uh, the background check itself. Is this a, a private vendor? Do we know that at this point? Uh, I heard someone say it's about thirty-five dollars. Okay. Representative Warren. Thank you for the question, Representative Graham. It, the bill requires um, that it be done a fingerprint background check uh, done by a DPS, not, not by a credit agency. Follow up. Follow up. Does DPS? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the state SBI. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we are prepared to move. Uh, not quite yet. Representative White, another question. Did you say that this would cover state and federal background checks or just state? So we're not going to confirm it for you, but state and federal. Did you say that you could get both of those for $35 from the SDI? From the fiscal note here, they said the estimated cost was $35. I can take from my personal experience. Uh, working on another bill regarding immigration background checks, setting with a representative from SBI, they quoted me $38 for a state and federal criminal background check. Follow up. I don't care. <laughs> for a growing school system that is growing a school a year, maybe 750 students and the additional resources. We can't hear you. Can you talk a little closer to the light, please? For a growing school system that is growing <coughs> a school a year, and we have several of those systems in North Carolina. I, I love this bill. We need to have this bill. I am very concerned about financial um, concerns that it's going to cause for local school systems when you are hiring anywhere from five, around 300 to 500 new employees a year. This, this is a, a chunk of change. and. Having worked with criminal background checks for a, a long time now, I'm going to be real surprised if we can get a criminal, and, I mean, a state and a federal a criminal background check through the SBI for $38. If we can, that's a deal, but it's still going to impact these systems that are growing so rapidly. Thank you so much for the bill, though. I really appreciate it. I do remind the representative this bill goes to finance next which will deal a lot with that very issue. But Representative Warren, if you wish to respond, you're welcome to do so. Actually, I was going to make that remark, but also offer to uh, get you a quote from SBI as, as to what the cost for that would be. Before we move on, let's get this uh, amendment on, so we're dealing with the bill as amendment. As amended, Representative Bradford, you're recognized for the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I apologize to the committee for taking a few minutes to get it ready. The bill prior to PCS was okay. When the PCS came out, um, I needed to make, uh, make this change or suggest the change. So, um, a lot of great questions from both Representative Graham and Representative White. And I think this amendment will perhaps answer some questions and solve some problems. First of all, um, under current law, it you know, the locals have to adopt a policy. And this bill, which is a very good bill, I'm going to certainly support it, um, requires that there be a background check. What my amendment does is it also allows locals to actually make a choice, to either use the Department of Public Safety background check, which is really just a fingerprint background check. The other option, which they use today, would be a commercial screening background check. And I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, I have a lot of experience in background checks because I screen hundreds of people every single month for my business. And with a, with a fingerprint background check, one would think, well, that's got to be great, it's the FBI, etc. The, the challenge with fingerprints is all it really does is help confirm identity of somebody and things that may be tagged to it, such as an arrest. But that alone isn't really the issue. Most, most people who apply are really who they say they are. What you want to know is what have they done in the past. 
And so commercial screening provides a more complete look into someone's background, not only from the arrest record, but also falls all the way through, including disposition, whether what kind of, uh, was it a felony, was it a misdemeanor, was it expunged, etc. It's cheaper for the local areas, which is what they're used to paying today. So Representative White it would not have a net impact, I don't believe, to the local levels. The FBI background check, I do believe it is more than $38. I think it's somewhere closer to 60 but I finance, we can figure that out. This would be a much cheaper option. It would be a much thorough option, um, and it's also quicker. Imagine a school bus driver applying for a job and they have to wait four to six weeks to get a result back. These folks need jobs. They're going to go find a new job very quickly. A commercial background check is two to three days. So it's cheaper, it's quicker, it's more thorough. And what this amendment would do would just give locals the option. They most certainly can still use the uh, Department of Public um, Safety one if they want, but I would probably wage that most of them will continue to use the more thorough commercial background check. So that's what this amendment does. It still makes it a requirement. Um, I hope you'll support it. Happy to answer any questions. All right. Uh, so we have an amendment before us. Uh, Representative Warren, you want to comment on the amendment? Yes, sir. Thank you. And thank you for the amendment. Uh, before I talk about the amendment, I want to point out one thing. The bill does allow the LEAs to make an offer uh, conditional to the uh, to the background check coming in. So th that part will proceed. Uh, as far as the amendment goes, the, the, I think uh, Representative Brad Bradford makes some very excellent points, and I agree with him. Well, the problem I have with the amendment is giving the LEA the latitude to choose the fingerprint background check or the commercial entity um, takes away from the, the heart of the bill, which is to develop and demonstrate the consistency from Graham and Cherokee to Manteo and Tadare uh, counties. And we have a consistency in the background check, which was what the basis for the F grade that the uh, state got in the USA Today report, which was the impetus for the whole bill last year. So. Personally, I, I wouldn't have a, a preference whether, well, I guess I wouldn't have a preference, but it would be that it would be one or the other. And I would actually like to ask staff if anybody on staff would want to weigh in on that, because if I'm wrong, I'd be glad to support the amendment, but I, I just have difficulty with the um, you know, difference between the two qualities. Chair McCall. Um. Representative Warren is correct that, that the the effect of the amendment would be to allow would, there would be consistency in the sense that every LEA would have to have a policy to conduct a type of criminal background check. However, there would not be a requirement that they all conduct the same type of criminal background check. So they could be using either the fingerprint criminal background check or the consumer reporting agency. Um, from past surveys with LEAs, uh, our understanding is that all 115 school systems have a policy requiring criminal background checks, but some of them choose to use the fingerprint option and others use the consumer reporting agency option at this time. Do we have a list of folks? I'll tell you who's on the list. Uh, Representative Graham, Riddell, Jones, and Blackwell. But before I call on you, I'm going to uh, advise you of a technical correction to the title of the bill, in case you want to make note. So on page one, line two, the word fingerprint will come out. And it'll read in that, the sentence will read, an act to require criminal background checks. Da, 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 da. So just. If the, that's if the amendment is adopted, by the way. I hope I was clear. Okay. With that, let's go to questions. Representative Grant. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I, I do support the bill. I, I think we're, we're looking at the amendment specifically. And, that's and where we thank, are you, thank you for your concern, um, Representative. And, um, my, my heart tells me this would not be a good, good amendment for financial reasons. We're talking about a commercial vendor who would do criminal background checks. Obviously, they can get that check done much quicker. Um, but I like your comment, uh, Representative, about a person's offer employment contingent upon a criminal background check. Um, and I would be real careful that we um, put policy in place that's going to be a financial burden on the individual and or the school system. Commercial 
criminal background checks can be very expensive. Um, and, I, and that's my concern with that. We, we have a system in place in our state with our SBI who can do criminal background checks. Mr. Chairman. And I, and I, I just wanted to make, make that. All right, since uh, this question has to do with the amendment, the amendment sponsor will respond. Uh, thank you. I represent Graham. Um, believe it or not, the commercial checks are faster and they're cheaper. So the financial burden actually goes the opposite way. But what we're really focused on here, I think we all would agree, the whole intent of doing a background check is to really make sure that we have a, a worthwhile person who's going to be working in our public school system. And if that's what we're trying to achieve, a commercial background check is more thorough than a fingerprint background check. This gives the LAAs an option. It doesn't say they have to use a commercial. I would probably wager that most of them, if not all of them, will continue to use the commercial because they're cheaper, they're faster, and they're more thorough. And from a requirement perspective, for uniformity, adopt, requiring a local area to adopt a policy versus this bill, even as amended if this passes, would require it, I think would have changed that grade. In other words, I think that would address the concern. I would most certainly be open to the idea that all the LEAs only use commercial and not use the FBI. But I'm trying to leave that there as an option. Okay. But if we're worried about that, I'm happy to accept the friendly amendment to my amendment to change that. Thank you. Follow up, President I'd Graham. I'd like to comment on that. Okay. Um, from experience, matter of fact, I just uh, had communication recently with the SBI about doing state criminal background checks. Uh, their cost is $10. A commercial background check is $35. So I'm really concerned about not using the system that we have in place that will do a thorough job, that will do an accurate job, and uh, I, I think the cost is very reasonable. Uh, comment from the bill sponsor, but we've got to be moving along here, so. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and in the interest of time, and the fact that I'm amenable to the change, but it's unclear that we have before us the exact cost for either type of, uh, of uh, background check. And I would commit to the committee, if we move this bill forward today, when we get to finance, between now and finance, I will work with people on, uh, in fact, I've already talked to the lobbyists for the commercial industry, um, and I will find out what those charges are. I'd be glad to get back with you, Representative Bradford, and make that change in finance. All right, Representative right now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for the sponsors for bringing the bill forward. Uh, just wanted to agree and move forward that what I think a good idea Representative Bradford has, either or, is a good move here. Thank okay. you. No, he is not. Representative Jones. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I agree uh, with the amendment sponsor. I just have a, a technical question, basically, either for the amendment sponsor or for the, um, or for the staff. The uh, changes that are made, uh, make two changes on page two, and make it, uh, the appropriate change on page four. But then on page five, line 43, um, it would seem that there is a similar language there. And my question is, should the same change be made there in this amendment? I'm not sure we understand it. Representative Jones, so, so I think I, if I could just walk through real quickly. So on page, on the first page of the amendment, on pages 2, 11, 12, and page 2, line 16, the way that paragraph is structured, the sentences read a little bit differently than they do in the other two sections. So it's, it, the language is the same in all three of these sections, but it's Structure a little differently, so it goes in at different places um, for the LEA portion, and then on page four, that's the charter portion, and page five is the regional school portion. So they will all have the same language in them. It's just the uh, the local board of education statute is the oldest one, and it's not. It's written a little. It's been around a long time, and sometimes when statutes have been, they read a little more clumsily, and so because of that, it's spread out a little more the language that has to be amended. Follow up, Mr. Chair. Okay, my specific question is on page 5, line 43. Um, 42 and 43 currently read the Board of Direction. The Board of Directors shall uniformly require applicants to be checked for a criminal history by the Department of Public Safety. So my question is, um, together with what we're doing on the other changes, should that not say 
uh, either by a consumer reporting agency, the Department of Public Safety, or both. Representative Jones, do you have the second page of the amendment? Did they give you the second page? No, I do not. Okay, that change is actually on page two of two. That exact thing you're talking about is on page two of the amendment. I'm sorry, they Thank brought you. them into issue. That's okay. So I should have asked that Thank question. you. All right, um, Representative Blackwell. On the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll try to be fast. Um, uh, I have had the opportunity for the last uh, two interims to chair the House Select Committee on Education Strategy and Practices. This topic is one that we discussed and had uh, some rather extensive presentation on. On the issue of consistency, the need for consistency is not to dictate that background checks have to be done by a single agency that does it precisely the same way every time. Where the consistency is needed is in the LEAs going deeply enough into criminal background checks to get the report at all. The amendment is an excellent amendment because one, it gives the LEA the option, if they think speed is fast and is better for them, they can choose the one they think is the fastest. Uh, if they are willing to pay more or less and want to save money, that's their option. What we need to be consistent in requiring is that at a minimum, they've got to make the check. And that's what this bill accomplishes. Uh, final thing I'll say is, uh, uh, on a fairly narrow point, the issue that was uh, discussed about the speed as it relates to offering employment to somebody who's looking for a job, while it may be the case that the LEA could use the slower process with JPS and make a contingent offer, if you've got an applicant who's interested in being employed, he may not want to wait around on the contingency to go away. He or she may decide they need to go ahead and get employed. So I'd say leave it up to the LEA as long as we know that whether it is the commercial group or it's JPS, they are checking what we want them to check. Thank you. Representative Hardison. Yeah, thank you, Mr. On Chair. On the amendment? Yep, on the amendment. Okay. So uh, I agree with the comments from Representative Blackwell just now, uh, but I wanted to speak in favor of the amendment and thank Representative Bradford for bringing it up. Uh, my understanding is that CRAs are actually, as we've discussed today, they're faster, uh, they're cheaper, they're more thorough, they're accurate. Also, I wanted to point out that they're regulated under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, which requires the maximum possible accuracy before reporting the information. I think they could be turned around in 48 to 72 hours. And I think it makes sense to provide uh, LEAs with the option whether or not they'd like to uh, use the CRA. So I think this is a great amendment. I uh, urge the committee to support it. Thank you. Representative Richardson, on the amendment. No, it's on the bill. Okay, we'll hold you. Hold that. Representative Pittman, on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to say I agree with the spirit of this amendment, but I think, as Representative Warren was saying, there seems to be some question as to which is actually cheaper and that sort of thing. And I think his suggestion that they wait to work on this before it goes to finance would be much better. So I, I, I think we ought to turn down this amendment for now and let them work on this between now and finance. I do suggest to you, just keep in mind, I was just advised this may not end up in finance. So more work may have to come on the floor if so. Right. Did you want to follow up, Urgent Pittman? Well, you said what I was going to say. Sorry. Okay. Uh, um, on the amendment, Representative Blackwell, for a quick response of Representative Pittman's comment. One of the advantages of the option is this is not a one-time decision that the LEA would get to make. If things get expensive, they can choose the less expensive. And what's most expensive or least today may not be the case tomorrow. In response to what comment that Representative White made earlier, it may be that the consumer agency can negotiate that if you've got over 300 that you're getting checked, they'll give you a better rate than if you're only doing five. So we maximize our ability to save money by giving those choices. All right, with that said, we're gonna vote on the amendment. 
amendments before you. You've heard the uh, discussion. All those in favor of the amendment, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed the amendment, no. I do. Ayes have it. The amendment passes. We're back on the bill as amended. Representative Richardson and then Chair Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a question, uh, and it may not be relevant, but we struck uh, fingerprinting out of the title. Does that mean we need to strike fingerprinting out of the body of the bill where it's seen? Um, no, Representative Richardson, we just needed to take it out of the title because it will no longer be a requirement that all people have to have fingerprint criminal background checks. That will still be one of the options that can be exercised, however. Okay. Uh, Chairman Elmore, on the bill as amended. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanted to say I wanted to compliment Representative Warren on his work on this bill. Um, before the PCS, what you saw was a bill that just created another, basically, layer of bureaucracy. And the whole issue with this is that the layers of bureaucracy are not communicating with one another. Uh, and with the cost element, the, the original form of this actually put it on the back of the teacher, to where the teacher was paying for all of this. Uh, and I've never heard of an employer that charges their uh, respective employees for the drug testing or whatever. And uh, Representative Warren has worked real hard. And the key to this whole um, bill that you have in front of you is communication. Now we have the different entities communicating with one another. So they are aware of the criminal history of these employees. So this is going to prevent the issue of the employee doing something awful, criminal, and then going to another system. Also, it creates a line of communication to the state board of ed that deals with the licensure. And right now, without that communication, if you have any inquiry of an employee, they basically ask, uh, the LEA will give the employment dates, and that's pretty much the extent. This bill empowers them to be able to say, yes, Mr. Such and Such was let go because he committed a criminal act. And I feel sure, I trust the LEAs enough, that if Mr. Such and Such created a uh, criminal act, that he would not be given a job in the other system. I would hope. And if you have that going on after this bill, the accountability is truly put at the local level where it is easier for them to be accountable because they're in the grocery store with those local board members and if they've been hiring people with criminal histories that are awful, uh, you can talk with them one-on-one -on -one about it. Uh, and also with the state board, this will help empower them on the licensure component to truly know that if an employee has done something that bad, that they should be able to have the information that they need to make the decision on revoking the license. So this is a bill about communication. Uh, I, I just have a, about one more comment, if that's all right, Mr. Chair. I'm not Sure, I understand. Thank you. You do know the drill. You did it last week. I, I know exactly the drill, sir. Uh, but anyway, uh, I compliment the bill. I hope that you will support the bill, and I think this is a simple solution to solve a big problem um, today. So I urge you to support it. Representative Jones for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move for a favor of court. The House Committee substitute for House Bill 117 as amended and rolled into a new committee substitute um, with a referral to um, finance and unfavorable for the original bill. I appreciate that. I can call on you for that, but we do have one more Representative Kelly, I don't want to leave you out. Thank you so much. Um, the clock. I think it's a good deal, but I want to find out who's paying for the background checks. Is it the employee or the LEA or who? Okay, LEA. And that's why it's not going to finance. Okay. One, one last question. Um, is there any opposition to this bill? As it is before amendment. I have not heard from the NCAA yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to thank Representative Warren and his um, primary sponsors for this. The local LEAs, I believe, in North Carolina will take a deep breath when this passes. Of relief. Thank you so much. Representative Jones has made his motion. It's on the floor. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. The ayes have it. The meeting is adjourned.